What are the early warning signs of a relationship or partnership going bad? Stay tuned to find out. Okay, here's the question. How are we dark horses? You know, the ones everyone is betting against, the ones they don't expect to win, place, or even show on the track, and they'll even laugh on us when we talk about trying. How do we show the world our greatness and triumph? Come on. Well, that's the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. This is The Dark Horse Entrepreneur. My name is... Tracy Brinkman. And push it up. What is up? What is up? What is up, my dark horse friends and family? Welcome back to your ongoing dose of partnership and relationship learning. I'm your dark horse host, Tracy Brinkman. You, well, that is infinitely more important, my friend. You are a driven entrepreneur or one in the making. Either way, you're here because you're ready to start, restart, kickstart, or just start leveling up with some great marketing, personal or business tips and results in order to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it absolutely deserves to be. That's why I'm here hitting you with yet another solo success episode coming to you straight from Dark Horse HQ as we dive deep into success with actionable advice, tips, and steps designed to help you level up your game, your relationship game, your business game, your personal development game. Because as we already know, there are no shortcuts to success except for taking those little steps toward your goal every single day. And the first little step I'd really like you to take today, because I know you're getting value from this show, right? Yeah. Kind of feel you nodding your head right now. It's all right. Maybe you're the first time listening. You're about to get some value. I'm going to drop some knowledge on you today. Before we do that, you can go on down there, hit that subscribe button, leave us a five-star rating, leave us some kind words in the reviews. Those subscribes, ratings, and reviews are your way. You, the listener, is your way to tell those podcast platforms out there that you're getting that value. So they'll lift us up a little bit in the rankings so that we can reach more driven entrepreneurs just like you. So please take a moment, show the love and help spread the word. I appreciate you. So in episode, what was it? 231, Gina was sharing the uh, adventures that she had gone on with her previous business partner. And all those adventures weren't fun, right? And I mean, they were fun in the beginning. Everything was going well, rocking and rolling. And then it kind of fell apart and she was asked to leave. So I, I wanted to spend a little time sharing those warning signs that are out there. And I think so many people tend to ignore, right? They're like, or they make excuses for them, which is just another way of ignoring it. But there are certainly warning signs that it may be time to break up your partnership, break up your relationship. A lot of these warning signs I'm going to share with you can be used in more than just a business uh, landscape. They can be used in your personal life and your friendships, uh, but certainly, uh, definitely in the business arena, they are warning signs that something is going awry and you'll want to address it post haste. And a lot of times when you see these signs creep up and start to rear their ugly heads, it's just the beginning and you can quite often salvage the relationship or the partnership and get things back on track. Sometimes there's things going on in people's world outside, uh, you know, the arena that you and them are in together and it begins to leak in to your business partnership or whatever partnership or relationship you may have. And if you can get on board and be helpful and be empathetic, uh, and address the issues uh, when the warning flag first goes up, then quite often you don't end up in a situation like Gina had where you're exiting uh, a, a successful, what was a successful business and relationship to go off on your own. Unless, you know, of course, that's what you want. In that case, move on, my friend, move on. Okay, anyway, so let's get to some of these warning flags. And I think the first one we'll talk about here is the partner in your relationship is behaving irresponsibly. And this one here has an element of danger in it as well, right? Because maybe your partner's out there taking some, making some risky business moves without consulting you, right? Maybe they're being irresponsible in just their behavior. And that can seriously jeopardize not just themselves, uh, but certainly uh, your business's 
reputation. And, you know, this could go things outside the business. I mean, this could go into drug use, right? And you've heard my story. I, I you know, totally let my business fall by the wayside as a result of that way back in my dark days. Uh, gambling is another one. How they treat their employees, how they treat their clients, right? Uh, maybe it's how they're showing up. Or maybe they're not showing up, right? Maybe they're showing up under the influence or intoxicated. I mean, the list just goes on and on. They show up angry. They got things going on at home. And like I mentioned earlier, it's leaking into the business. If your partner's beginning to or are continuing to behave irresponsibly, you're going to want to nip that one in the bud post haste. Because trust me when I say this one person and maybe they're you know you always say uh, first impressions you can never get a second chance for a first impression imagine a, a new big client walking in the door and seeing your partner in this irrational behavior taking these big risks showing up intoxicated treating your employees like caca right that's just, oh, wow, they can single-handedly distort the entire view that that person or the public in general has about you and your business. I think another one that kind of pivots right off of that is uh, your partner isn't being completely honest. And don't get me wrong here. I'm talking about more than just lying because l omission right? That's lying. If you ask a question and they omit a certain level of truth, they're not telling the truth. Because if you think about the phrase, telling the truth, it's just that. It's telling the truth. And if you've asked the question and they haven't told the whole truth and nothing but the truth, right? And just the facts, ma'am, then and I guess in essence, you could say they're lying. Now, are they being blatantly dishonest? I don't, right? I guess that's, you know, um, up to your perspective of what that is. But if you're asking the questions and they're not giving you the complete truth, I personally think it's completely unacceptable. Because if you can't trust your business partner or who would just say partners for the rest of this episode because it could be anything right it could be your life partner it could be your your spouse uh you know your boyfriend your girlfriend uh or, or a business partner just someone you're collaborating with on a joint venture if you can't trust them um in the the business dealings and ensure that they're going to be operating in a ethical moral and legal basis then you probably don't want to be uh, in a partnership with them. And not confronting your partner about their truthfulness can, can, can certainly lead to even bigger issues. So, you know, if you you get a, a that, that feeling, something's not right. I think there's something going on. And you don't ask the questions to quell that feeling it could lead to bigger things i mean here we'll go we'll go to the extremes here tax or tax fraud right insider trading embezzlement you know uh corporate espionage i know it, those are all extreme examples but certainly is possible in today's world so i urge you uh to be 100 percent transparent with in your partnerships and expect the same in return. Now, a more elusive one, I think, is going to be when your values and visions begin to separate. Quite often, a lot of times, when you first consider going into a partnership, um, the values seem to be aligned. The visions seem to be aligned. Um, and at times, if there are slight variations, they're just that, they're slight variations. But as you get into things, and uh, let's, let's talk about romantic relationships for a second. Right. You, you, you meet them. You're infatuated. Everything's all roses and champagne and strawberries. And uh, maybe you have slightly different areas uh, of visions for the future because, you know, you are separate people. You've grown up separate paths. Um, but when you get to the serious part of the relationship uh, about things like, I don't know, marriage, kids, how to raise those kids, right? They're, there's no right or wrong way in the big scheme of things, but if your vision is strict disciplinarian and their vision is more, I don't know, loosey goosey, well, that's a problem, right? There's, there's, 
no middle ground there that you're going to come to unless you're going to totally compromise and everything. So uh, again, the same thing kind of comes up in, uh, in business partnerships. If you begin to have different visions or from the get-go you have different vis- visions and different values either or or both because consider this if you as an entrepreneur you value your customer's perception your customer's loyalty as the number one value and the partner that you're getting ready to go into a partnership with or are in a partnership with their number one value is profit you're going to butt heads because there are going to be times when you, given your value structure, will be willing to give up some profit to best serve your customer's vision, your customer's um, expectations, where your partner is going to be going, no, you can't be giving up that profit, right? Because they hold that as their number one value. And for you to take that value down, it's not going to work well. You are going to butt heads. So as you see those visions and values uh, begin to separate and delineate, you're going to have to have that uh, tough conversation about, okay, are we going separate ways or can we pull this back together so that we have an understanding of how to realign our visions or keep our visions in alignment, uh, keep our values in check with each other, that there are times when my customer vision is going to have to take a backseat to profit and vice versa, right? And I think this even gets more complicated when you guys, when you start off together with aligned visions and values. But over time, as things begin to happen you get one degree of separation and then five and then six and then 20 and as that gets magnified you know as time goes on you're just getting further and further apart so the question becomes do you try and salvage it and bring it back together or do you find a way to politely and equitably go your separate ways and that one kind of leads right into the next one here was when it comes to those conversations are they un willing to compromise. Look, you're not going to agree on everything. I get Um, And there are going to be concessions, but the thing is you have to remember the concessions have to be on both sides. If you concede on a point of contention this time, well, you you should be willing and able to expect them to concede a point of contention next time. Or maybe there's a more complex issue going on and there are multiple points of concession available but it seems like you're the only one giving up the uh, concessions or maybe it's the other way around maybe you're the one always asking for the concessions i mean what uh, and if that's checking you gotta you gotta check yourself there you don't want to have the it's my way or the highway um, attitude especially when it comes to partners there are times when being you know what's the phrase they use out there pig-headed bull-headed or just stubborn can leverage you some advantages in business, right? You you lay down the gauntlet and you end up getting what you want. And that's fine. There are times for that. I'm not talking about those times. I'm talking about those times when you're sitting down at the table trying to figure things out and the person on the other side of the table is not willing to put aside their ego and their pride in order to come to an agreement. Or maybe it's on your side of the table. You're not willing to put away put aside your ego or your pride to come to an agreement. And that's going to make for a very long, arduous road to reach the next level of success that you both are looking for. And if it gets one of those impasses, maybe it's, uh, you know, it's time to kind of look each other in the eye and say, you know what, maybe this road that we're traveling it's time for us to travel it alone and not continue to travel together and then have that discussion. I mean, it could even be started as something as simple as saying, you know what, John, Jane, I've noticed that you're really passionate about your idea. I love that passion. But that passion has brought us to a point where sometimes you're really unwilling to yield the floor, yield to suggestions, yield to disagreements. And then you can continue the conversation of how, you know, how, hey, that can be an admirable quality, but perhaps it's not great for the partnership that we have uh, entered into and it's time for us to go our separate ways. And the last one I want to share with you here is just the opposite of the previous one. You know, instead of them being, you know, super passionate and unwilling to bend and compromise, what if they're just indifferent? Yeah, whatever. 
right? You know, we've seen those, right? And sometimes I think it's it's the issue of reaching the level they were seeking. So, you know, they, they're in there and they're grinding away. They, they came into the, uh, the, the business with you and you guys launched it off and he, they were just, man, they were there every day at five in the morning to nine at night, whatever it took they were willing to do. But now that there's this level of success you've attained, they've kind of like, all right, my work here is done. They feel accomplished. And now they've just kind of left the day-to-day operations to everyone else. And there are those type of people out there. And God love them. They have their place, right? I've known a couple of them where they're really good with coming up with that idea, getting in the, in, to the thick of things and grinding out in the beginning. But once that idea is uh, at a certain level, they're just like, okay, I'm done. I'm not, they're not the kind of nuts and bolts kind of person. They're not that next level vision kind of person. They like the, the energy and the, uh, the chaos of the startup, right? Maybe it's even that uncertainty. I don't know. Um, but hopefully you, you get what I'm coming at here. There's a point where they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of done with this. If we, uh, if we flip this back into uh, the romantic arena, we've seen those guys and gals. Um, that they love the hunt, right? They enjoy the chase, but once they, uh, okay, I'll continue with the, the hunting analogy. Once they capture the prey and they're kind of like, okay, well, that's, you know, I'm kind of done with this, right? We, we've all known that guy, right? And I'll, I'll speak from a guy's perspective, being a guy myself. Um, we've all known that guy that would just go after every pretty girl around, right? And uh, or anyone that they were attracted to and, you know, do all the great things, do all the right things. And they meant them when they said them, but once became that, that person that they were seeking is like, oh yeah, totally. I want to be with you and you only, uh, you know, it's, they become indifferent to the situation. It's like, okay, well, there's, there's no work involved. The chaos is gone. The, the chase is over uh, and they move on to something else, right? It may be a signal of something else going on. I don't know. I, I, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not going to go there. But either way, what happens in the relationship is the other person has to pick up the slack, right? For all the empty promises and the lack of work that's being done and their relationships. And you've seen them, right? Where, uh, be it a romantic relationship or business, where the other one partner is checked out. They're just kind of there coasting along and the other partner is doing all the work uh, from a romantic perspective or from a business. So the question, I guess, then becomes, um, is it time to call it quits? Right now, if you see one of these warning signs pop up on your radar screen, be it in your personal relationship or professional relationship, it's certainly time to have a conversation. If you're seeing all five of them, right, or maybe you know three or more, ooh, I think it's really time to have a very serious and probably tough conversation. Because you have to think about more than just yourself. Because if you're feeling disharmony, I'm going to imagine your employees are feeling disharmony. And maybe they don't have employees. I guarantee you, your clients are feeling, right? And as a result, the success of your business and your company and your venture is going to feel it, right? And most likely in a negative way. So it may not be time to call it quits. It's certainly time to have that conversation. If you're seeing one or more of these signals to see how you can salvage the relationship or if it's actually time to break up and move on to the betterment of you, uh, your your now partner, and ultimately your company and your clients that you serve. All righty, shake it off. All right, got to shake it off a little bit there. That wraps up yet another amazing week here at the Dark Horse HQ. Hey, by the way, if you're looking for some help with your podcast, maybe you're looking to launch one. You're thinking about, hmm, this podcast thing is kind of cool. It's a great marketing uh, tool for your business, all kinds of business. Or maybe you already have one. You're looking for some help with the editing and promotion of your podcast, or you're just still trying to figure out how the heck I can monetize this bad boy. Go ahead and reach out to me, Tracy at DarkHorseSchooling.com, or you can go to the website, darkhorseschooling.com backslash 
coaching, let's chat. Fill out the form there. Let's get you on a power huddle session. I'll make sure you walk away from that free call with a success plan. Again, that's darkhorseschooling.com forward slash coaching. Let's see how I can be of service to you in helping you start, restart, or kickstart your business or your podcast. And again, I know you want to keep getting all these solo success episodes as well as the amazing guest interviews I'm lucky enough to be able to bring on here. So go on down there, hit that subscribe button, drop us a five-star rating, leave us some kind words in the reviews, ask questions, leave suggestions. I read every single one of these reviews. And as I mentioned earlier, it is those subscribes, ratings, and reviews that those podcast platforms out there use to grade us, maybe lift us up in the rankings a little bit, so that we can reach more driven entrepreneurs just like yourself. So please take a moment and show the love. Again, I'm going to leave you as I always do. Think successfully and take action. Thank you for listening to the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Check us out at www.darkhorseschooling.com. All right. My name is Tracy Brinkman.